हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू ई पी जी पाठशाला आई एम डॉक्टर जितेन वशिष्ठ फ्रॉम डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ बायो टेक्नोलॉजी एंड बायोफॉर्मेटिक्स जे पी यूनिवर्सिटी ऑफ इन्फॉर्मेशन टेक्नोलॉजी सोलन एंड हिमाचल प्रदेश टूडे आई एम गोइंग टू टॉक अबाउट अ मॉड्यूल विच नेम इज सिग्नल ट्रांसट्रक्शन पाथवेज इन डेवलपमेंट एंड डिसीज सो एज यू नो दैट सेल हैज एनवायरमेंट विच इज आउटसाइड टू इट एंड दे आर सर्टन मॉलिक्यूल्स which are required to come into the vicinity of the cell and these molecules will be utilized for different biological processes all biological processes involving development and progression of disease require various types of cells various types of cells work together and communicate with each other in the various biological processes which are called cell signaling in this module we are focused on following objectives number 1 basic elements of cell signaling systems number 2 ligands and their biochemical nature number 3 receptors and their types then we'll go for role of second messengers in signal transduction processes then we will proceed for g protein coupled receptors next to it its ras pathway then we'll talk about the receptor tyrosine kinases in the lastly we will talk about role of jackstrap pathway and pathways which are regulated by proteolytic cleavages now cell signaling is defined as a communication process which coordinates the various processes by cell communications cell perceives and respond to their microenvironments in the cellular signaling and any fault in the cellular signaling interactions information processing lead to disease progression such as cancer or metabolic disease like diabetes therefore disease may be treated more effectively by understanding its molecular cascade or cell signaling if you see there is a general cascade of sequencing sequences of receiving information from outside the cell and internal cellular processes this is being seen in figure number 1 if you see that the molecules are coming from outside and these basic signal transactions are required to give a proper coordination with the outside molecules to the inside cell now coming to the basic elements of cell signaling systems we have to talk about the extra cellular messenger molecules these molecules make communication between cells by traveling a short distance and stimulate neighboring cells these molecules may travel throughout the body by potentially stimulating cells that are far away from the source they affect every aspect of cell structure and function these molecules are generally known as ligands the ligand molecules possesses a wide variety of their biochemical natures and may be present in the different forms like number 1 amino acids and their derivatives these amino acids like glutamate all molecules which are derived from amino acids precursors like acetylcholine epinephrine dopamine and thyroid hormone these are the basically coming as a amino acids okay, precursors now second molecules are the gaseous ligands like nitric oxide hydrogen sulfide and carbon monoxide they are also act as a ligand molecules the third number comes for the steroid these are basically derived from the molecule cholesterol sex differentiation and pregnancy are regulated through steroid hormone and lastly we have eicosides which are derived from arachidonic acids these regulate inflammation blood pressure and sometimes the blood clotting now the utilization of these chemical moieties or ligands or which are the extracellular messenger molecules by cell happens in several ways like autocrine paracrine endocrine for the autocrine signaling cells releasing the messengers will stimulate or inhibit themselves while in case of paracrine signaling messenger molecules act 
on cells that are close in proximity to the original cells by traveling only a short distances. They are degraded by the enzymes or they bind to the extracellular matrix. Due to their unstable structure, they limit their traveling. Now the number three, we have endocrine signaling. Endocrine messengers such as hormones reach their target cells which are located at distant site in the body through the use of bloodstream. This whole scenario can be seen in figure number two which shows the different kinds of cellular signalings. Now, these cellular signaling molecules are one part and the another part is the receptors which will adapt these molecules. Cells can only respond to a particular extracellular message if they have expressing receptors that specifically recognize and bind that messenger molecule. Different types of cells possess different types of receptors which bind and recognize different ligands specifically. The ligands bind to the receptor at the outer surface of the corresponding cell and induces a conformation changes in the receptor that causes the signal to be recycled across the membrane to the receptor and it will reach to the cytoplasmic domain. If you see we have different types of receptor molecules. Number one, G protein coupled receptor that we call the GPCRs. These receptors contain seven transmembrane helices or basically alpha helices and translate the binding of extracellular signaling molecules into the activation of GTP binding domains. Number two, we have enzyme linked receptors. These receptors are also transmembrane receptors on which the extracellular ligand binds on the extracellular phase and causes enzymatic activity on the intracellular side. They contain an extracellular lig ligand binding domain and an intracellular catalytic domain. They may be present in at six different times and receptor protein tyrosine kinases RTKs are the best example of enzyme linked receptors. Binding of specific extracellular ligand to a receptor kinases usually result dimination of the receptors and activation of protein kinase domain which is present within its cytoplasmic region of the receptor. These protein kinases phosphorylate specific tyrosine residue of the cytoplasmic substrate proteins which alter their activity, localization and their ability to interact with other proteins within the cell. For example, insulin like growth factor receptors Ig that we call the IGRF. The number three have we have ligand gated channels. The ability of these proteins to conduct a flow of ion across the plasma membrane which is regulated by direct binding of ligand such as calcium, sodium and potassium. Sometimes we have specific steroid hormone receptor which diffuses across the membrane and bind to the receptor which are present in the cytoplasm. Hormone binding results in the conformation change of the receptor that causes hormone receptor complex to move into the nucleus and bind to the element present in the promoter or enhancer of hormone responsive genes. For example, androgen regulates transcription of prostate specific antigen that is PSA through androgen receptor in androgen dependent prostate cancer. Along with ligand receptor, the another moiety is there that we call the second messenger. Signaling molecules ligands like hormones or neurotransmitter reach to the cell and bind to their specific receptor and then second messengers are the molecules which are present in the cell cytoplasm act to trigger a response. Second messengers act as a chemical relay from the plasma membrane into the cytoplasm for intracellular signal transactions. For example, molecules like 
cyclic AMC, cyclic GMP, inositol triphosphate, diacyl glycerol, and calcium are the examples of second messenger. A well-known second messenger is cyclic AMP, which is synthesized by adenyl cyclase and capable of diffusing to other sites within the cell. Cyclic AMP molecules activate protein kinase A, which regulate the glucose metabolism by regulating enzymes of glycogen synthase and phosphorylase kinase. Phosphorylation of glycogen synthase inhibits its catalytic activity and thus prevents the conversion of glucose into the glycogen. Now we will talk about more about G protein coupled receptors that is because of GPCRs. G protein coupled receptors include a family of integral membrane protein that have seven, seven transmembrane domain linked to a heteromeric G protein. This is the largest family of membrane proteins and receptors having about 800 member, members in even in mammals. They also sometimes refer to as 7 transmembrane receptors as they contain 7 transmembrane helices. You can see this thing in the figure. Their amino terminus is present on outside of the cell and 7 alpha helices that transfers the plasma membrane are connected by a loop of varying length and the carboxy terminal is present into inside the cell. If you see in the figure, you will find there is two dimensional schematic of generic GPCRs which are set in a lipid draft. Now we will talk about G protein which is a heteromeric which are sometimes called a heteromeric G protein consists of three different polypeptides namely G alpha, beta and gamma subunits which bind guanine nucleotide either GTP form or GTP form. Heterotrimeric G proteins are held at the plasma membrane by lipid chains that are covalently attached to the different subunits. The guanine nucleotide binding site is present in G alpha subunit. G protein have four different types GS, Q, I, 12, 13. Adenyl cyclase is activated by GTP bound G sub subunits and GQ family members contain G alpha subunit that activates PLC beta which hydrolyzes phosphoryl inositol bisphosphate producing inositol triphosphate and diacyl glycol. Now coming to the next level that's the signal transaction by activation of GPCRs. Heterotrimeric G protein consists of G alpha, beta and G gamma subunits until GPCRs interact with ligand molecules for example epinephrine. Once ligand interact with GPCRs it leads to conformation changes in heterotrimeric structures of G protein. Replacement of GDP by GTP results in conformation changes in the G alpha subunits. Now GTP bound conformations, the G alpha subunit has lower affinity towards G beta and gamma subunits. Activation of effector leads to the production of second messengers like CAMP, phospholipase C, beta and cyclic GMP phosphodiesterase. G alpha subunits become inactive by hydrolysis of GTP to GTP and inorganic phosphate. It decreases in the affinity for the effector and an increase in the affinity for beta gamma subunits which results in dissociation from the effector and reassociate with the beta gamma subunits to form inactive heterotrimeric G protein. Now there are certain physiological processes which are mediated by GPCRs and heterotrimeric G proteins. For example, if you have a epinephrine, it will be utilize a beta androgenic receptor and it contains effective adenylyl cyclase molecule and this process is required for 
glycogen breakdown. Similarly, you will find if you have a stimulus of acetylcholine, it will be required for slowing of pacemaker activity. For that matter, muscarin, muscarinic receptors are present on the cell membrane and the effector molecules are potassium channels. Now, there are certain diseases which are associated with the defective G protein pathway. For example, if there is a disease of pituitary or thyroid tumors, it means there is a defect in the G alpha subunit. Another disease is McEwen or Albright syndrome, which also shows defective G protein. Similarly, there are certain other diseases which are associated with defective G protein couple receptors in which you will find neonat neonatal severe hyperparathyroidism in which the receptor is defective and this figure shows in a tabular form that there are certain diseases which are defective which are associated with a defect in the G protein couple receptors. Now, there is an interesting thing happens with the G protein that cholera toxin, which is produced by a bacterium Vibrio cholerae, inhibits GTPase activity in the cells of intestinal epithelial by modifying G alpha subunits. This results in the activation of adenyl cyclase and CAMP, which causes the epithelial cells to secrete larger volume of fluid into the intestinal lumen and which is also responsible for making a diarrheal disease. Now the second category of receptors is enzyme linked receptors for signaling. These receptors belong to the second most evident cell receptors that recognizes extracellular signals and results in the cell proliferation and differentiation. A very low concentration of approximately 10 to the power minus 9 to 10 to the power minus 11 molar of ligand is required to activate processes of signal transaction. Responses of this ligand receptor interactions is relatively slow as they require hours to complete a process and changes a gene express eventually involve many signaling steps. However, signaling through these receptors may result in quick responses on cytoskeleton required for controlling cell shape and movement. Abnormalities in this class of receptors have foremost role. Survival disorders like cancer. They are following different types of enzyme linked receptors which are linked in different signaling pathways. These are basically of different six types. One of among these is the receptor tyrosine kinases, which are diverse range of secreted growth factors act as extracellular ligands to activate receptor tyrosine kinases. Receptor tyrosine kinases include largest family of enzyme linked receptors having N terminal extracellular domain for ligand binding and intracellular C terminal has tyrosine kinase activity. This figure shows the schematic representation of tyrosine receptor tyrosine kinase. Now, if you see that tyrosine kinase receptor require two domains, one which is present on the outside of the cell and another is towards inside of the cell. And activation of RAS MAP kinase pathway is the best example for receptor tyrosine kinase signaling. Binding of hormones like epidermal growth factors with extracellular domains lead to dimerization of receptor tyrosine kinases. Receptor dimerization results in cross phosphorylation of receptor tyrosine residues. GRB2 acts as an adapter having two SH2 domain which interact with phosphorylated tyrosine of the receptor and one SH3 domain 
which interacts with the proline rich sequences of SOS. Here, the SOS is just referred to as a GEF for activation of RAS protein as it allows the exchange of GDP with GTP. RAS is a small monomeric G protein belongs to RAS superfamily along with Rho, ARF, RAB and REN and it plays an important role in cell growth, division, differentiation, mortality, mortality and transport of the material. Similar to G protein, these are activated by binding of GTP and inactivated by conversion from GTP to GDP. Guanine exchange factor that's JAF responsible for the conversion from GDP to GTP and GTPAs are required for GTP hydrolysis into GDP. This whole is summarized in this figure which shows the activation of RAS protein which represents A represents the activation cycle of RAS protein through exchange of GTP and GTP and B represents the activation of RAS through signaling where the binding of epidermal growth factors leads to exchange of GDP by GTP that results in activation of RAS protein. Now, activated RAS protein activates RAF kinase. RAF kinase then phosphorylates two consecutive serine residues of MAC which leads to the activation of MAC. This MAC is dual specific enzyme that can phosphorylate serine or threonine or sometimes tyrosine. This mitogen activating protein MAP kinase is activated by MAC that phosphorylates threonine and tyrosine separated by any one residue. Activated MAP kinase is then required for regulation of gene expression inside the nucleus. Now, whatever role of this pathway in diseases as this pathway is crucial for cell growth and differential expression any mutation that causes uncontrolled signaling may result in the formation of various human tumors for example loss loss of gap activity leads to the constant expression of ras that results in the downstream activation of MAC kinase which further leads to the uncontrolled growth. Another example includes a point mutation in RAS sequences that is the substitution of any amino acid for glycine at 12th position that converts normal protein into an active oncogene. This mutated protein again has reduced GTPase activity results in constant expression of active RAS. Tyrosine kinases associated which are associated with the receptors, these are another receptors. These cell surface receptors activated by phosphorylation of the tyrosine residue but they lack tyrosine kinase domain. Hence they require a cytoplasmic tyrosine kinase for their activity. SRC family of protein kinase is the largest cytoplasmic tyrosine kinases among the mammals. Activation of Jackstead pathway is an example of tyrosine kinase associated receptors. Interferons secreted by viral affected cells bind to the receptors on neighboring cells to protect them from viral infection. Active interferon receptors then activate Jonas kinase, that's we call the Jack kinase, that is a cytoplasmic tyrosine kinase. These Jack then activate stats, which are signal transducers and activators of transcription by phosphorylation and then allow them to enter inside the nucleus to control the expression of different genes. Fibroblast growth factors can also activate the Jackstead cas cascade which is extremely important in differentiation of blood cells, the growth of limbs and 
the activation of casein genes during milk production. Prolactin is released from the anterior pituitary gland and binds to the prolactin receptor in memory duct epithelial cells. Prolactin causes the dimerization of this receptor and jack proteins which are attached to this receptor phosphorylate each other upon prolactin binding. The activated receptors add a phosphate group to a tyrosine residue of a particular STAT5 protein. This allows STAT5 protein to dimerize and translocate it into the nucleus. The STAT5 protein activate transcription of the casein gene. So this is so much of importance of Jack strat pathway and because of this you will find they are involved also in the diseases. If you see that the premature activation of strats lead to a lethal thenotrophic dysplasia, a severe skeletal disorder where rib and limb bones fail to proliferate. Mutations in the chains of cytokine receptors are unable to respond their lichen interleukins, hence a cause for severe combined immunodeficiency that's because of the SCIDs. Now, along with the previous receptors, there are certain pathways which are regulated by proteolytic cleavages. And for that matter, similar to these signaling pathways which are activated by covalent modification, these pathways are activated by cleavage of receptor proteins. They contain NF-kappa B, W2 pathway, hedgehog pathway, etc. NF-kappa B is a nuclear factor kappa light chain enhancer of activated of B cells. These NF-kappa B proteins are important for inflammatory responsible tumor necrosis factor alpha or TNF alpha and interleukin 1 are cytokines which are important to induce inflammation in vertebrates. These cytokines act as ligands and their binding with receptors lead to the activation of NF-kappa B complex that is generally found in an inactive form inside the cytoplasm. Formation of homo or heterodimer is required to control the expression of genes. These larger dimer complexes are inactivated by a protein called inhibitory kappa B or I kappa B binding of TNF alpha or IL1 beta with their recept respective receptors leads to the phosphorylation by a specific threonine serine or threonine kinase called I kappa B kinase and subsequently degradation of I kappa B NF kappa B protein complexes contain nuclear localization signals that are exposed after the degradation of I kappa B. This figure shows the whole overview pathway of NF kappa B. Now this pathway has a much more role in the diseases. If you see that active NF kappa B signaling may cause a multiple sclerosis. Several physiological functions like learning and synaptic plasticity are maintained by NF kappa B. Elevated level of NF kappa B are associated with the cause of Alzheimer's disease. Now there is another pathway that we call notch delta pathway which plays an important role in decision of controlling cell fate during development. Best example is development of nerve cells where a precursor cell once committed a future nerve cells then an immediate neighbor cells were instructs not to develop as nerve cells by a process called lateral inhibition. Contact dependent signaling mediated by delta is important for lateral inhibition. Delta is displayed only in committed neural precursor cells where notch is present in all other precursors. 
binding of notch receptor on neighboring cells with delta signal them not to become nerve cells. This figure shows a lateral inhibition of neighbor cells by neural progenitors. Neural progenitors cell activate the expression of delta that binds to the notch receptor of neighbor cell and induces them not to form nerve cell. This pathway also have a significant role in several diseases like germline mutations in pathway genes may cause spondylocostal decostris syndrome which is a defect of the bones and there is a liver damage also is associated with this pathway. Now coming to the different pathway that is called WNT pathway which contain three different WNT signal pathway which are being characterized number one the canonical WNT pathway the non-canonical planar cell polarity pathway and the non-canonical WNT calcium pathway. The only difference between the categories all the three is that the canonical pathway involves the protein beta catenin while the non-canonical pathway operates independently of it. These pathways get activated by binding of WNT protein ligand to a transmembrane receptors of frizzled family of proteins which possesses the biological signals to the disabled protein inside the cell. Activation of disabled inhibits the activity of glycogen synthesis kinase 3 enzymes which prevents the dissociation of beta catenin protein from the APC protein which in turn target beta catenin for degradation. In the presence of WNT signal GSK is inhibited and the beta catenin can dissociate from the APC protein and enter into the nucleus. The catenin binds to the LEF or TCF transcription factors inside the nucleus and the catenin protein is recognized as cell addition complex and APC also functions as a tumor suppressor. The transformation of normal adult colon epithelial cells into colon cancer is thought to occur when the APC gene is mutated and can no longer keep beta catenin out of the nucleus. Once in the nucleus, catenin can bind with another transcription factor and activates genes for cell division. WNT protein activates result to activate the disabled proteins which activate RAC and Rho proteins which coordinate the cytoskeleton and which can also regulate the gene expression. Certain WNT proteins activate result receptors in a way that it releases calcium and can cause the calcium dependent gene expression. Now there is another signal transaction pathway that is called hedgehog. Hedgehog pathway is essential for vertebrates limb development, neural dif differentiation and facial morphogenesis. Proteins of hedgehog family functions by binding to a receptor called patched. Patched protein in the cell membrane is an inhibitory of the smoothened protein. In the absence of hedgehog binding to the patched, the cubitus interpreters, the CI, or the homologous, these are the homologous glide proteins in vertebrates, is tethered to the microtubules by COS2 and fuse protein. This binding allows the PKA and slim proteins to cleave CI into a transcription repressor that blocks the transcription of particular gene. This figure shows that the production of cell transcription repressors when hedgehog is not bind to the patched P patch protein and in this P represents the phosphate. Binding of hedgehog 
to patched smooth and protein become activated by alteration of patch protein shape a smooth and protein releases the ci protein from the microtubules by adding more phosphate to the cos2 and fuse proteins and inactivate the cleavage protein pk and slim this prevents the cleavage of ci protein the intact ci protein can now enter the nucleus and binds a cbp protein where it acts as a transcriptional activator of the same genes it used to repress now students let's summarize what we have learned from this module the number one cells perceive and respond to the micro environments in the cellular signaling and any fault in signaling interactions or information processes leads to disease progression such as cancer or diabetes therefore diseases may be treated more effectively by understanding its molecular cascade or cell signaling pathway ligands molecules make communication between cells by traveling a short distance and stimulate neighboring cells these molecules may travel throughout the body by potentially stimulating cells that are far away from the sources ligand molecules possess a wide variety of their biochemical natures like amino acid and amino acid derivatives gases ligands steroids etc signaling may be of autocrine paracrine or endocrine in nature cells can only respond to a particular extracellular message if they have expressing receptors that are specifically recognized and bind that mes messenger molecules mm -hmm. different types of cells possesses different types of receptors which bind and recognizes different ligands they can if you see the receptors we have g protein coupled receptors and gm linked receptors ligand gated channels and steroid hormone receptors which are general receptors utilized for signal cascade third moiety is the second messenger which acts as a chemical relay from the plasma membrane into the cytoplasm for intracellular signal transduction example of second messenger molecules include cyclic amp cyclic gmp and astral triphosphate g coupled protein receptors include a family of integral membrane protein that have seven seven transmembrane domains which are linked to a heterotrimeric g protein this is the largest family of membrane proteins and receptors having approximately 800 members in the mammals heteromeric g protein is consisting of three different polypeptides which are basically g alpha beta and gamma these subunits which bind guanine nucleotide either in the form of gdp or gtp once ligand interact with gpcrs it leads to conformation changes in heteromeric structure of g protein replacement of gdp by gtp results in a conformation changes in g alpha subunit now another thing is enzyme link receptors which contain tyrosine receptor kinases if that's you call the rtks which are diverse range of free created growth factors act as extracellular ligands to activate receptor tyrosine kinase SRC family of protein kinases is the largest cytoplasmic tyrosine kinase among mammals. Activation of Jackstrat pathway is an example of tyrosine kinase associated receptor. Fibroblast growth factors can also activate Jackstrat Jackstrat cascade which is extremely important in the differentiation of blood cells, the growth of limbs and the activation of casein gene during milk production the strat pathway is very important in the regulation of human fetal bone mutation that prematurely activate the strat pathway have been reported in some severe forms of dwarfism 
such as lethal dysplasia where the growth plates of rib and limb bones fail to proliferate. Similar to signaling pathways activated by covalent modification, there are some, some pathways that are activated by the cleavage of receptor proteins. These contain NF-kappa B pathway, notch delta pathway, WNT pathway and hedgehog pathway. NF-kappa B proteins are important for inflammatory processes. TNF-alpha and interleukin-1 are the cytokines which are important to induce inflammation in vertebrates. Several physiological functions like learning and synaptic plasticity are maintained by NF-kappa B. Elevated levels of NF-kappa B are associated with the cause of sometimes the Alzheimer diseases. Notch delta pathway plays an important role in disease and of controlling cell fate during development. There are three different WNT signaling pathways have been characterized which are canonical, the non-canonical and the non-canonical WNT calcium pathway. And the last pathway we have the hedgehog pathway which is essential for vertebrate limb development, neural differentiation and facial morphogenesis. Proteins of hedgehog family functions by binding a receptor called patched. Patched protein in the cell membrane is the inhibitor of smoothened protein and this whole summarizes the signal transaction cascade. Thank you.